All right, so advanced physics, this is um, kind of the next step in dealing with magnetism. Um, this is kind of where we got left off on the last video as it kind of cut. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about what the, the actual right-hand rule. The key thing is it's right-hand, and it's dealing with a positive charge, okay? Um, and what I'll do is I will let you kind of figure out what you think... Um, would be used for a negative charge. I kind of asked that in the last video. Um, why don't you see if you can tell me sometime in class um, while I'm going around. I may ask you. Um, if not, see if you can just kind of catch me and tell me what you think would be used for a negative charge. Because remember, a positive charge really isn't what's moving in electricity. It's going to be an electron, so a negative charge. Um, a positive charge is assuming like a proton or something like that's moving through a magnetic field, okay? All right, um, kind of the key thing here, this has to be done with a right hand, okay? And so this is kind of an outline of my own right hand, all right? Um, and it's facing this way. So here's my palm, my thumb, my fingers, okay? The key thing, your thumb stands for velocity, just like it did when we were talking about a wire. Um, this dealing with the velocity of the charge, and it's a positive charge, okay? Um, so your thumb is pointing the direction that that positive charge is going, okay? So in this case, the velocity is towards the top of the page. Your fingers represent the magnetic field, and that's the symbol B, okay? It's used, magnetic field has the symbol B, um, in equations and just all kinds of times, okay? And finally, your palm is the force that acts on that charge because what happens is as the charge moves through the field, the magnets themselves, or the magnetic field, pushes on that charge, okay? It has an effect to push on that charge. And so the magnetic field is pointed this way on this paper. It's pointed to the left of the paper. And remember, by the way, that the field's always going from north to south. Okay? Um, so that means the, this would be kind of like north end, this would be south end. Um, just to kind of give you a reference there. Okay? So if that's the case, if we have the velocity moving this way and the field pointing this way, your palm shows the force that acts on that charge. And I always remember the, the uh, force or using the palm because if I were to push on something or to hit something, it would be with the palm of my hand, okay? So that's going to be pushing or hitting up against that charge as it's moving. So the force is acting on the positive charge like this as it's moving this way. It's being pushed upwards, okay? You always use your right hand. And so if we were to say we were changing around, say, well, the velocity is going to be towards the left of the page and the field is going to be towards the top, then all of a sudden now the force is down. Or let's say the velocity is towards the bottom of the page and field is still towards the left. Again, force is down. And you can use any two of the three. So if we said if the force was up and the velocity was towards the bottom of the page, then that means the field has to be out here to the right. Okay, so that allows us to be able to use this to figure out what's going on, okay? Now when it comes to a diagram, as far as figuring it out, we can use the right hand rule, okay? Um, but when it comes to a diagram, the way it's always written is if you consider maybe maybe think about your you are shooting an arrow, okay? If the field is going into the page, it's like you have the feathers of this arrow sticking out, like it just went into a target, okay? If you have X's, that means that the arrow has gone into the page. The field is into the page. Now, if you have dots, it's like the point of the arrow is coming out of the page, okay? It's coming this way. So you don't see the feathers, you see the point, okay? And that's coming out of the page. 
usually velocity is going to be symbolized with like a V and an arrow unless they tell you the velocity is coming out of the page or into the page or something like that. Okay, but most of the time X's and dots are used for magnetic fields either into the page with an X or a dot coming out of the page. Okay, now one more thing we'll talk about here um, and then I'm planning on showing you just a couple of demonstration things. Um, but magnetic flux, all flux means is change. And so if you have magne magnetic flux, that means there's some type of a change in what's going on magnetically, okay? And that is what allows electricity to work. Without magnetic flux, there is no chance of electricity. And what happens is you can either have the field changing or the flux occurring like one of three ways. One, it's a change of an area. Um, if you change the area that this is happening by making a coil of wire smaller, like a solenoid, which we'll talk more about, um, if, if you make a coil of wire smaller, or if you make a, um, if you were to take and uh, change the amount of electric current going through it, so you make it less current or more current, it's going to change the magnetic flux. Or if you add a magnet in or take a magnet out, okay, the passing of the magnet creates flux as well. And so that's generally how it happens, is the presence of a magnet or the weakness of that magnet, um, whether just in just the proximity of a wire around that as you get closer and further away. And so with a generator, what they do is you have a loop of wire that flips in the presence of that magnet. And so as part of the wire is getting closer, then it's got a stronger, it's cutting through magnetic field lines and it's got a stronger flux, okay? And then as it moves it further away, it's weakened. So it's a change of field strength because of it flipping back and forth, okay? All right, so I'm just kind of show you a few things. And this is kind of one of those things. You can see that the magnetic field itself is changing just because of this magnet, okay? Um, so, magnets have a north and south end. So if I start changing the orientation of these magnets around, I can then get my compass to behave different ways, okay? Or moving it close by or away or whatever. And um, they're being attracted to each other. These are, these are neo, neodymium magnets, which is the type of magnet, whoops, <laughs> type of magnet I referred to earlier, okay? Key thing, you remember what has to be in it for a magnet to work, you have to have some type of iron. Um, so these are all iron containing materials, okay? Here's a belt buckle. Parts of it are more magnetic than others. For example, that part right there, it's not steel. It does not have any iron in it, whereas this part obviously is, okay? Spoon. Okay, um, and 